quantum computers apparently, uh, are we think digital computers are fast. Yeah. These are amazingly fast. Quantum states allow for is much more complex information to be encoded into a single bit. Somewhat approximately telling you the power of a quantum computer. Quantum computers have the potential to completely change how we use technology of the future. Quantum computers and they can do something which classical computers cannot. Quantum computers will impact your life beyond measure. And you're probably not even aware of it. It is the one technology alongside AI that could change civilization more than any other. Computer, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes! From healthcare to agriculture to energy, quantum computing has the potential to be able to make a material dent to human development and understanding in some key areas that allow us to live, work, and interact with each other. Quantum computing could also help us understand more about the world and indeed, the universe we live in. But quantum computing is a complicated and somewhat opaque and unrelatable concept that is difficult to get your mind around. This leads many people being totally clueless of what it is and how it differs from traditional computing or even supercomputers. As such, the concept of quantum computing seems alien, especially given real world applications are not there yet. And there is no consumer application like ChatGPT as we have for AI that we can all use and play around with. So what are the key principles of quantum computing and how do they make quantum computers more powerful than supercomputers? Who are the tech companies who are getting excited about quantum computing and pumping billions to accelerate their models? And how could quantum computing impact your life? So what is quantum computing? The truth is quantum computing is a highly technical area that is difficult to grasp, especially given there is no commercial solution that we can work with. And this video is not intending on going into the detail at a molecular level of quantum computing. However, it is important to be able to understand the high level principles of quantum computers and draw the distinction between them and traditional computers and supercomputers, which I'll term as classical computers throughout. Firstly, it's important to appreciate that the quantum computer is not a natural evolution of computing. A quantum computer is not just a much more powerful traditional computer that you may have at home or a V2 of the supercomputer. A quantum computer is a computer that leverages the principles of quantum mechanics, the behavior of particles at the smallest scales to perform extremely complex calculations that would otherwise take billions of years with classical computers. Unlike classical computers that use bits to represent information in zeros and ones, quantum computers use quantum bits or qubits, which is the fundamental unit of information in quantum computing. Qubits differ from the bits in traditional computers in that they can have varying states. So as opposed to being as zeros and ones, a qubit can exist in multiple states simultaneously. It is this critical difference that enables quantum computers to process information in parallel as opposed to sequentially. And that can allow quantum computers to potentially solve super complex problems quickly and more efficiently. Perhaps an analogy to keep in mind when thinking about quantum computing, they operate more like in a 3D world, whereas classical computers operate in a 2D world. Now, given you should be able to appreciate that a greater level of permutations are possible with quantum computers versus classical computers, it would be interesting to explore just a couple more of the key principles with quantum computers. We touched on one of the key principles of quantum computers just now with the 2D, 3D analogy, relatively speaking. Superposition in quantum computing refers to the ability of a qubit to exist in multiple states simultaneously, as opposed to just zeros and ones, as is the case with bits. This allows quantum computers to represent and process multiple combinations of zero and one simultaneously. Another way to think about quantum computing versus classical computers and appreciate the concept of superposition is to consider what happens in the toss or spin of a coin. Classical computers operate in the world where you toss the coin and it lands either heads or tails. A quantum computer equivalent, however, with the principle of superposition would be if you were to spin the coin and it is exhibiting a combination of head and tail at any one time. Entanglement is the other concept you need to understand. Entanglement in quantum computing refers to a phenomenon where two or more qubits become intrinsically linked, such that the state of one qubit is dependent on the state of the others, even when they are physically separated. This principle is more simply explained by considering a real world example as an analogy. Imagine you order a latte and an espresso from a coffee shop, but they give you the coffees in two boxes in return that you cannot see inside. On opening one of the boxes, if one has the latte, then by definition of entanglement, the the other box will have an espresso. The concept of entanglement enables quantum computers to perform parallel computations and potentially achieve much faster processing speeds than classical computers. Qubits are the basic unit of information in quantum computing. And through the phenomenon of superposition, qubits are able to exist in multiple states simultaneously. Entanglement 
is when the quantum states of qubits is intrinsically correlated, typically through interactions or operations that result in a shared quantum state. This would mean that measurements made on one qubit can instantaneously affect the state of the other entangled qubits, similar to our coffee example earlier, where the identification of one coffee allowed us to derive the identification of the other coffee. These core principles are what allows quantum computers to have the ability to process vast amounts of information in parallel and potentially perform calculations that are more efficient than classical computers. Now that you're hopefully comfortable with some of the key principles underlying quantum computing, it's worth considering what a quantum computer looks like and how it's made up. Quantum computers look very different to the computers you and I will be used to, which have been getting smaller and smaller over the decades. Quantum computer, on the other hand, can be very large with its size dependent on the number of qubits it has. The greater the number of qubits, the larger the computer until technology advances to help with this. A quantum computer is made up of physical qubits, control systems that manipulate and entangle the qubits, and measurement devices that extract and interpret the outcomes of the computation. We've already spoken about qubits before, and their purpose is clear, which is to store quantum information. The control system is a collection of hardware and software components that provide precise control and manipulation of the qubits. The components in the control system apply sequences of pulses to individual or groups of qubits, enabling the process of entanglement that we spoke about and allowing for the implementation of quantum algorithms for computation. Finally, the measurement device is a tool or apparatus that allows us to observe and extract information from the quantum state of qubits. This provides measurable results that help determine the outcome of a quantum computation. And this allows us to obtain the desired information from the system. And all of this can be connected to a traditional computer to receive and process the outputs. The traditional computer can help to analyze and interpret the outputs, making them more accessible and understandable to humans. It's important to understand that for a number of reasons, the quantum computer needs to be in a special environment. A quantum computer needs to be operated in a highly controlled and isolated environment with extremely low temperatures, close to absolute zero degrees Kelvin, or minus 273 degrees Celsius, or minus 459 degrees Fahrenheit. This environment is referred to as a cryogenic setup, and it helps minimize external disturbances and thermal noise that could disrupt the fragile quantum states of the qubits, allowing for more accurate and reliable quantum computations. By minimizing noise, the quantum computer can maintain the coherence of qubits for longer periods and perform more accurate computations. Also, the special environment helps isolate the quantum computer from external interference, such as electromagnetic radiation and vibrations, which can introduce errors and decoherence in the qubits. The controlled environment ensures that the quantum computer operates in the most stable and pristine conditions possible, optimizing its performance and reliability. So who is leading the pack when it comes to developing quantum computers? Well, it's the big tech companies we know, such as IBM, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, and NVIDIA, as well as quantum-focused businesses such as IonQ and SciQuantum in the US. IBM have been actively involved in quantum computing research and development for many years. They have made significant advancements in the number of qubits. IBM has the current record with a computer for the largest number of qubits with a processor that contained 433 quantum bits. IBM has said it is now aiming to build a quantum computer with 100,000 qubits within the next decade has made good progress with quantum computing, in particular with their research in 2019, of achieving quantum supremacy, which refers to performing a calculation that was beyond the capabilities of classic computers. Their computer was able to perform a calculation in 200 seconds that would have taken the world's most powerful supercomputer 10,000 years to calculate. Has been focusing efforts on developing qubits in a way that is highly resistant to errors caused by environmental noise and disturbances, hence increasing qubit performance. They have also launched Azure Quantum, a cloud-based platform that allows researchers and developers to explore quantum computing. It has its own quantum computing service called Amazon Bracket, providing access to various quantum hardware technologies and software tools to explore quantum computing. Dominance in quantum computing can be determined by two things, the number of qubits you have and qubit performance, i.e. how prone the qubits are to errors, which determines what your net effective qubit quantum is. We spoke about IBM's ambitions for the number of qubits, but Google has said it is aiming to get to a million qubits by the end of the decade. But relying on number of qubits alone can be a bit of a red herring 
factors, you also have to factor in error correction, i.e. from noise that reduces effective qubits to a number lower that is cited. And Microsoft is focusing on this. This is all well and good, but what are the real world problems quantum computing can solve? And when will that come to fruition? It's expected that quantum computing will have the power to achieve new breakthroughs in areas such as drug discovery in healthcare, fertilizer production in agriculture, battery performance, and in the fields of cryptography and weather forecasting. In drug discovery, quantum computing can assist by simulating and analyzing complex molecular interactions more accurately and efficiently. This will enable the exploration of larger chemical spaces and accelerate the discovery of potential drugs with improved efficacy and fewer side effects. In fertilizer production, quantum computing can help with optimizing fertilizer production by efficiently modeling and simulating chemical reactions, catalysts, and reaction conditions enabling the discovery of novel and more efficient formulations that enhance crop yields while minimizing environmental impact. Quantum computing can contribute to improving battery performance by simulating and optimizing the properties of materials at the atomic and molecular level. This will enable the discovery of new materials and configurations with enhanced energy storage capabilities, longer lifespan, and faster charging rates. Quantum computing holds immense potential to revolutionize various fields by leveraging the principles of quantum mechanics. It offers a possibility of solving complex problems more efficiently and tackling challenges that are beyond the reach of classical computers. While still in its early stages, ongoing advancements in qubit technology, error correction, and algorithm development are paving the way for exciting applications in areas such as cryptography, drug discovery, and material science. Quantum computing holds the promise of unlocking the unprecedented computational power and transforming industries, paving the way for groundbreaking discoveries, innovative solutions, and transformative advancements that can revolutionize our world.